Hi, it's Cheryl with Caribou Country Lifestyle. So we have had some pretty cold days in the last uh, couple of weeks or so and uh, a lot of snow. I'm just going to give you a little look at what we've had for snow. So you see it has been snowing like crazy everywhere like you look over here and just on top of that like that's unbelievable how much snow we have been getting and the nights have been cold uh, uh, we live in um, British Columbia, Canada, and it was minus 30 degrees Celsius last night, and right now we're at minus 22, and earlier, like it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, earlier it was minus 18, so right now I'm just feeding the pigs their scraps and giving the chickens some more water. We don't have a heated water system for the chickens. So we have been having to, actually we've been having to get the water from in the house in a big five gallon bucket. And that's what we've been using to give the pigs and the chickens water. And we've been storing it in the shop because this is a heated shop. So we've been storing the water to keep it from freezing. Um, water for the chickens here. And I don't know, I probably don't have to add any more water to this chicken feeder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take water out for the pigs then. And I'm gonna bring out this chicken water as well. I'll just put it outside until I'm ready to take it. Close the door, keep the heat inside the shop, and I will take this bucket of water. I gotta switch my arms around. I can't carry this bucket of water with my bad shoulder. So I'm gonna do it with my other arm and carry the camera with my with my right arm. And we have just this little tiny path dug through the snow to get to the pigs. Now we weren't, our plan was not to have pigs in the winter. I'm just gonna put you right there for now. It's funny, with the temperatures this cold, our chickens have not been laying eggs. Well, I think they had three eggs yesterday and there hasn't been any today. So I don't know if it might be too cold for them. We do have a heat lamp set up in their coops. So let's take this water out to them and give them their water too. So in the morning, my husband went out and he feeds the chickens, lets them out, gives them water in the morning. But by this time, it's already frozen. So we come out mid-afternoon and 
give them more water as well. So I just have to... There's Mama. She's come to see me on this side. It was so, it's been so cold that they've had frost on their fur. So I don't know if, how well they do with this cold, but we make sure they have lots of hay, or straw I should say, in their pig hut so that they can, yeah, this is pretty much frozen solid. So, I'll put this one. I'll just set that down there. Take this little cappy thing off. And then they can come out and have a drink of water. They're like debating whether or not they even want to come out. They're like, I don't know. I don't think it's warm enough to be coming out, but uh, you're gonna uh, check and see what I brought out there. They'll be happy that they can get some more water. Let's see. That's exactly what they want, is to get some water. A couple more coming out. Brave in the cold. Like I say, not quite as cold, but they sure aren't laying the eggs right now. Let's go take a look around the other side. Hey, Mama. Yeah, I know. It's cold out here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Look at that. She's so cute. I know. I know. Let's go see if there's any eggs. I don't think Jamie brought any in this morning. I'm not seeing any eggs. Oh well. It just must be too cold for them. Let's go check on this side. Like I say, we have a couple of heat lamps. One on each side of the coop. There's... there but everybody's just keeping warm chilling out not producing eggs they're probably saying I'm cold it's too cold oh yeah and everybody's huddled in on this side there's the heat lamp there not seeing any eggs. Let's go check on the other side. Nope. All we got are the fake eggs in there. Yeah. So I'll just take this frozen water and I'll put it back in the shop. And then by morning, this one will be thawed out. And then we can change that over for the chickens. And the same with the pigs. We give them fresh water in the morning along with their hog feed. And then I give them scraps mid-afternoon. We're still collecting scraps. My sister-in-law and brother-in-law have been 
so gracious as to give us their scraps also. So then I take that bucket of water and I bring it back into the house. I just want to show you that my son's supposed to be coming to shovel out the dog kennel. But look at this. Like, that snow bank. I guess it would, it's better if I, oh, there we go. But, like, we have a guy that comes, and an uh, older fellow, he's in his 80s. And he has a uh, four-wheeler with a plow on it. But my son has to come and shovel out the kennel. You can't even see my, my compost is buried in snow also. It's, we have just been getting dumped on. Eh. I've been staying in the house mostly for uh, it's past Christmas. It's actually uh, January the 30th, or January. It's December the 30th. Tomorrow is New Year's Eve. We stayed pretty low-key over the Christmas holidays. My sister and her husband came from Saskatchewan and they drove here and uh, they left uh, two days ago and as soon as they left I took down my tree, I vacuumed the living room cleaned everything up, took all the Christmas decorations down, and uh, done. Christmas is officially over. So tomorrow night, we're just going over to my sister-in-law's and my brother-in-law's place. And it's going to be pretty quiet, just the five of us. My son Austin's coming over as well. And our plan is to, um, we're just going to be playing uh, maybe some card games, not exactly sure. Might play uh, my camera. Might play some Catan. Enjoy playing Catan. Uh, we have, we just have a regular Catan and then we have... Uh, my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law have um, the Game of Thrones Catan. And we also have the Traitors and the Barbarians Catan. And we enjoy playing Catan. It's, it's actually quite fun. My husband wins a lot. That part's not so much fun. And if you ask my son, he doesn't like it either. But uh, there's got, always got to be a winner. And lately it just doesn't seem to be us. We showed my sister and her husband Catan and my sister thinks it's a lot like Monopoly. And so she doesn't care for Monopoly, but it was still fun, all in all. So this afternoon I am making a white cheese uh, chicken lasagna tonight for dinner so I'm just uh, going to boil my chicken breasts because you need a couple of cups of cooked chicken meat so I took out some chicken breasts this morning and I'm gonna boil that and make that tonight for dinner I started uh, sorting out my seeds going through it's that time I went online last night and I've ordered another catalog to have that mailed to me. Then, I don't think that, Mackenzie. I was gonna get Mackenzie to send me a, one of their catalogs, but there wasn't that option when I went online to search into that. So I think that is just, you have to order online. And I'll take a look through it and check out their, uh, online catalog and see if there's anything there that I might be interested in as well. And I'm not sure where Mackenzie Seeds are from. I didn't see online where exactly they uh, come from, so I'll have to check that out too and 
see where they are located as well. So excited about uh, ch thinking about seeds again. I already will be getting things set up downstairs. I'm going to be making sure that my lights are working on my uh, fluorescent lights. My sister was supposed to bring me some of her lights, grow lights that she has and she got here and she was so upset because she forgot. I mean, whatever. I have my fluorescent lights. I would like to upgrade to LED lights, but um, yeah, it's not a big deal. What I have works good. So I'm going to check out my lights, make sure everything. I have two extra grow lights as spares, just I have them on hand at all times. And I'm going to be cleaning up and uh, kind of sterilizing my little pot containers that I start my seeds in and also sterilize my trays as well. I'm going to or I want to order some of those fiber pots for starting seeds in and try that out. I'd like to um, see what how those work out too because then you're kind of getting away from the a bit of the plastic plus you can put it right into the ground with your plant. Once it's established and you're ready to plant it in the ground you can just pop it right into the ground. You don't have to um, pop it out of the plastic pot and then put it into the ground. So I'd like to try those and uh, see what those are going to be like. I'm excited about trying those. Organizing my seeds, I've um, there's some seeds that I have decided, ones that I had started at uh, six or eight weeks and I've decided that I need to start them sooner so I've moved them into my 10 week vegetables and herbs especially because uh, things like my leeks, I think I should have started those sooner. My eggplants, I feel like I should have started those sooner as well. Same with my cauliflower and my cabbage and my broccoli. Those are all ones that I think I should have started sooner than what they had stated on the back of the package. And you'll find that like um, there really is no gardening mistakes. It's all experiment. And that's exactly what it is. So what didn't work out for you, and you make notes of those things. I have a booklet that I keep notes in. And you just decide that, okay, next year I'm going to do that different. So this year I want to start some things a little sooner. And I have uh, a little checklist of things that I want to order more of as well. I did buy uh, quite a few seeds in the fall when I was out and about shopping at different um, like Art Nap and Home Depot and places that we don't have around where we are. I was able to pick up a few seed packets of some other tomatoes that I want to try and I definitely want to get some of the earlier variety of tomatoes. I also want to make sure that those tomatoes that take a longer time, I want to start those earlier too. So that's something that I want to make a note of and make sure that I remember that I need to start some tomatoes that take up to 90 days. I definitely want to start those earlier. We have about 110 days in our growing season here in the caribou. So that's something to take into consideration too. We are in a zone three. Now it's been a few days since my last video. I My battery had ran out, so my bad. Anyways, continuing on with getting things ready for the beginning of the year of new gardening is I always sterilize my trays, all my pots, and what I've done here is in my laundry sink I have um, warm to hot-ish uh, water with 
some a little bit of dish soap and a little bit of bleach and I have been sterilizing my trays and I'm just going to do the last one here so what I'm doing is there's still a bit of dirt in here and I dump the dirt out into a garbage can then I picked up one of these little mops dish mops from Canadian Tire it was like two bucks and I'm just cleaning the inside of the tray with this dish soap and bleach water getting most of the dirt and just anything that could be a residue of my previous growing season and then I'm going to turn my water on a little bit and give it a bit of a rinse to rinse that off. Some of these trays I've had for a long time and others I have just purchased and I'm just propping them up onto a towel so they have a chance to drain and air dry and then I will empty this sink and I will fill it up again. I'm going to grab all of my pots that I used, all of my seedling containers that I use for starting my seeds and I will do the exact same thing with all of those as well. So I'm going to go grab my pots. I'm going to empty out this sink and start all over with my pots and get those so that they're ready for starting seeds as well. Okay, so now I have my pots in the sink. And again, I'm using my little scrubber, my little $2 scrubber, and I just scrub the inside of these. And I have them in my um, dish soap and bleach solution. Now I'm just rinsing them out. A little bit of water. I'm just going to turn this down a bit so I'm not making a mess everywhere. And then what I'm doing is I'm stacking them upside down in those trays that I already cleaned. After you've done cleaning the trays that I did first, you'll want to kind of fold them up to the light. I'm just going to give you a quick just to, so what I do is I hold it up to the light just to see if there's any holes in the bottom of the tray because there's no point in using a tray that has holes in it because the minute that you go to water your seedlings and usually you're watering in the bottom of the tray not on the top of the dirt when you're watering the seedlings especially if I'm going to be using a water can, a watering can, then I'm going to definitely water from the bottom and not just that way you're not disturbing the seeds. But you want to make sure that your trays don't have any holes in them at all, or you're going to have water all over the place. So then I take my trays, shake the excess water out, and then all I'm doing is I'm just stacking them upside down in these trays that I've already cleaned and that way then they'll get a chance to air dry out and then I can, I'm ready to be able to start for when I do start my seeds. I'll have it, everything all set up and everything will be clean and sterilized. So that's the next step for the pots. Filled this tray up again. It has more of, uh, these are the ones I use the most of and I have not purchased any of these containers. I have purchased trays but I have not purchased containers. These are containers that I have accumulated from plants that have been purchased for me. These are the ones that I still have to clean. Before I even put them in the soapy water, I dump all the dirt and excess 
into my garbage and I throw out whatever containers that have slits or cracks in them. After I'm done that, then I will also be cleaning all of my lids, domes for my seedlings. And why I do that is um, just because they also need to be cleaned and you want to make sure that I, like years ago, I never sterilized any of my pots and uh, Jamie, my husband, would always say, you know, you should be sterilizing those. And I'd be like, eh, pfft. sterilize, sterilize. But it actually, in the last uh, two years, I have been sterilizing my pots because I've come to realize that you don't want to transfer anything from the year before that might have gotten, there might have been some kind of a fungus. It could be pretty much anything could be transferred over into your plants that you're starting new seedlings in. And you don't want that because then that's going to be getting into your dirt and it just could cause a whole another array of problems that you could be having. So I've just, uh, every year I learn a little bit more about getting myself organized before I tackle any of these jobs on. Uh, trying to make the least possible mess as as possible whereas last year I found that I had dirt everywhere I won't say that I didn't have some dirt on the floor this time but it was very minimal uh, last year I had dirt everywhere I didn't think to knock the dirt out of the containers before I put them into my laundry sink and I had so much dirt in the bottom of the sink after I was finished, I felt bad running that all down the drain. And who knows what kind of uh, havoc that could wreak on us. We are on a septic system and on a well system as well. And I just don't want to be making any more problems than uh, there need to be. Hi, so we're on day three now of my video of getting things started and ready for your 2022 growing season. So far I've sterilized all my pots that I start my seeds in and my trays and the plastic domes that I put over my trays when I'm starting my seeds. So I have all of those have been sterilized and air dried and so they're ready to go. Now I've been going through my old seed catalogs and I'm just comparing prices as far as getting more seed starting trays, getting more pots. I want to try the um, Jiffy Pots as well and I've been comparing prices between T&T &T and between Lindenberg. Those are two of the catalog companies that I order my seeds out of and other supplies. Sometimes I can find it here locally, some of my supplies. Um, as far as my dirt blend goes, I usually try to get that locally and I will find that on sale. And I have all the dirt that I need right now. I have um, my bales of the sun grow, which I have picked those up and there. I have the sun grow bales, which are a 3.8 cubic foot, which is 107 liters. I have two bales of that. So I think I'm pretty good as far as um, the dirt goes, but I do want to pick up some more pots, try the Jiffy Strip pots as well, and I want to pick up some 3 inch or 4 inch plastic pots because I'm wanting to sell plant starts in the farmer's market. This will be my first year going into a farmer's market, so I'm excited about that. I figure I can just start up extra seeds and then I can sell those plant starts just to make a little extra money on the side. As far as starting 
any seeds. I will not be starting any seeds until the probably about the third week in February. So between now and then I should be receiving my new catalogs. I've been going through my old catalogs and also figuring out which seeds I want to be looking for and there may be some new varieties of seeds when I receive the new catalogs. So I should be receiving those this time in January. It is actually January the 2nd and I just want to also throw out a little Happy New Year to everyone and hope that this new year is just as good or better than last year's growing season. It can only get better. I have added another catalog to my collection. So I have Lindenberg, which is through Brandon, Manitoba, and I have TNT, which is through Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I have requested a catalog from Vessies, and that's from York, Prince Edward Island. So I'm excited to get a catalog from them as well and be able to check that out. We'll be looking for varieties that do have a shorter growing season. I found that some of my tomato plants that I had last year didn't get enough of a growing season and those are tomatoes that are taking anywhere from 80 to 90 days before they're ready. I would like to be able to find, I do have some tomato seeds that are as early as 50 days and then some that are around 60 and 70 days. I just think I need to be looking for something with a shorter variety for our shorter season here in the caribou and figuring out which flower seeds I would like to purchase as well. I really liked growing sunflowers. Last year was my first year for sunflowers and I enjoyed growing those. I would definitely like to do some more of that as well. I really enjoyed the zinnias too, so I will definitely be growing more of those. Books that I have referred to that I find I can, I've gotten really good information from them. I have, it's the Canadian Edible Garden and it's about vegetables, herbs, fruits and seeds lots of good information from uh, this book. It has a lot of good uh, pictures as well. I like pictures. It's like a cookbook. <laughs> I don't buy cookbooks that don't have a lot of good pictures to them. I also have the Lois Holes Northern Vegetable Gardening. My garden primer book. I usually have this by my bed and I read a lot from that before I go to bed. I have a thousand and one best gardening tips as well. I'll be looking through that one. I haven't looked through that one in a few years but uh, I don't I hate getting rid of gardening books because I'm always afraid that oh what if there was some good gardening tips that would be helpful for me. And then this one 1001 hints and tips for your garden this one is, I've always, I've had this one for many years and I like it because it goes alphabetically, just like all the other ones too, but I just find that it has a lot of really good, useful information in it too. So, I think that about wraps up my um, what to start for the new year, for your new garden season and we will continue on on our next video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, throw in a like there too. Thanks again, and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.